To admit we have political prisoners is to admit that we operate outside of international law uh, in violation of the U.S. Constitution, all those things. They cannot admit that they have political or acknowledge they have political prisoners. So the State Department, the U.S. State Department, every year or every so often, maybe it's less frequently than a year, they put out a report showing all the countries in the world and ranking them and giving them little little uh, numerical gradations like little you know like like grade school marks a b c whatever uh as to how how they're doing on their violations human rights violations of their own people and one country that's not on the list is the united states itself and the chinese government and china is about the only country in the world that isn't afraid of the us not not anymore and the Chinese are, are saying, um, uh, what, you left out one country. And they put out a report, which I happen to have right here, the full text of human rights record of the United States in the year 2009. That was the last report. And it's, um, it's 11 pages long, and it covers things on violations of life, property, and personal security. It talks about the insecure quality of life in America, you know, because of so much violence the violations of civil and political rights, uh, demonstrators and people getting beaten up and um, attacked by police in different, different places, tasered or killed or murdered without just cause or a reason, um, uh, <clears throat> mismanagement and brutal conditions in prisons and such, um, including the prevalence of rape and that's economic, social, and cultural rights, unemployment, the, the fact that there are people who, who can, don't even have the right to, to food and a job. There are people living in tent cities now. Those are the lucky ones. There are other people who are just dying on park benches and the like. Um, I know a guy, his parents died because um, they died of cancer without any treatment, never got any treatment because they had no, they had no medical health, no, no medical insurance, no medical coverage, and they just simply, in terrific pain, died. They managed to get to a clinic and get a painkiller now and then, uh, which, which operates very inefficiently. Um, racial discrimination is still a chronic problem in the U.S. So uh, the mistreatment of uh, the rights of women and children, how they are terribly mistreated women, uh, frequent victims of violence and assault in America, um, the, um, as they are in many parts of the world. You know, you know, but America isn't on the list of human rights people. Uh, American children suffer from cold and hunger and the like. So um, there's really a lot here. <clears throat> and then U.S. violation of human rights of other nations, the Chinese, they, they were just helping out the State Department because the State Department was so busy writing these evaluations of all these other countries, they forgot their own country, the U.S. So, so the Chinese came along and gave them a very helpful hand. I, I hope our government turns around and thanks them for this and says, you've given us a lot here to think about and consider, and maybe we'll approach the rest of the world with a, with a little bit less arrogance and, and um, superiority. So there, there, that's, uh, and you can get this, let's see, full text of China's report on human rights. It's right on, um, I think it's right on the internet. You can find it somewhere, okay? I don't ever have to look anywhere. I get people, send, people send me so much. I'm not the great educator, I'm the great educatee. They all send me and pour stuff in. So I don't need a clipping service or anything. It just comes in. 